And I had chicken baste to everything. Sometimes I drink Hennessy on the rocks and chicken baste to top it off. What's up, y'all? I'm Big Kev from Blood Souls BBQ, Los Angeles, California. I'm born and raised in the CPT, Compton, California, and I am here to cook Sunday dinner for y'all. We're doing some smothered chicken, some collard greens, and some mashed potatoes and gravy. We're going to have fun today. And this recipe is available in my cookbook, because I'm going to refer to it, because sometimes I forget the recipes. About to season up this chicken. I already washed my damn chicken, so I don't feel like hearing nobody's mouth. So this recipe is what my mom used to cook on a lot of Sunday mornings and my granny in Texas. Sunday dinner was big in our household, real big. So I'm gonna season it up with a little seasoning salt. A lot of people like to allow their chicken before. I don't, because I like my chicken to kind of cook in the gravy. But whatever works for you, as long as it's good. Don't be cooking no nasty ass chicken on Sunday. You get a nasty meal on Sunday, it makes everybody weak start off bad. So I hit it with a little garlic powder a little onion powder, and I hit both sides. So all I'm gonna do now is brown. I'm gonna put a little grease in here, vegetable oil. I like my chicken to cook in my gravy. You don't want none of that. Just letting my grease get hot. There we go. Gotta hear that sizzle in it. You hear that sizzle? Once you brown it solid enough, you still get a nice crust on there without having to use flour. While my chicken is browning, I'm gonna cut up some of the things I need for my uh, gravy. I like a little onions and celery in mine. You gotta flavor your gravy, you and you have to check every step. And you gotta go back and forth. This recipe is good for oxtails, short ribs, you know, pretty much anything you can eat smothered. As I got older in my house with my mother, Irma Jean Bledsoe, you know, my mother worked at the post office for 30 some years. So once we got old enough to cook, she taught us how to cook exactly how she wanted us to cook for her. So mainly me, my sister couldn't cook her way out of a wet paper bag. I mean, she used to burn cold cereal, burn up water, boil water and burn that. I think she used to do it on purpose because she didn't like to cook, so. Now you see we got the fire just hot enough that it's not burning the chicken because all we trying to do is just get a little brown on there. You are not cooking the chicken right now, remember that. You know, I went to college. I actually graduated, believe that. My daughter said y'all need to uh, go get my money back because I didn't learn nothing. But I uh, uh, thought I was going to be a football player. Graduated, really wanted to be a teacher. Can you believe that? And then I realized, shit, I hate kids. I can't teach, you know. So I graduated, went to the Department of Corrections. Granny used to always say I was too much of an asshole to work for somebody. And she was right, ended up getting fired, you know. But the thing my granny used to always speak on was legal hustles. You gotta have a legal hustle. So even during the time I was in school, I used to DJ, sell chicken dinners, and that got me too. As I catered and started getting a name for myself with the catering, that's how Blood Souls came along because everybody kept saying, you need to have a barbecue. You need to have a barbecue restaurant. And that's what started. And I tell anybody, get you a legal hustle. Okay, so now I'm gonna build my gravy. I enjoy chatting with y'all. So I'm gonna add my onions and celery and garlic. This is an important step right here. You gotta get this brown even before you put your, uh, your flour in. I like to add a little kitchen bouquet. This is the biggest secret in a, in a soul food kitchen or damn near anybody's kitchen. And nobody can tell you exactly what it does except darkening, help darken the gravy. They say it flavors it, okay. Another secret, Lipton onion soup mix. Helps your gravy, straight cheating. So now I add a little flour. Now when you add in your flour, some people get so nervous about making gravy. Follow this recipe, you can make gravy good on the first time. So now y'all see this? This is what I want right here. And this is gonna tell me if I need more, gra more, more uh, flour. And I think I do because it's eating up, but you see how that's browning? Now I'm gonna add a little water. Now this is the step you gotta be careful of. Because this is when you're building the gravy. So you see already how all that's taking a form. You see all this chunkiness. It's going to be smooth like velvet in a few minutes. And you got to taste. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Uh, make you want to slap your mama. Not my mama. You be strapped. Somebody else's mama. All right, so now you add your chicken. 
So now you see it's not all the way smothered, but it's, it is once it starts boiling. Well, that's because we're going to get on to my, uh, my collard greens. Now I got to build the staple, especially in my family and most Southern families. Got to make some collard greens. And it's the same way you have to build flavors with your collard greens. So I always start off with a big fat ham hock. Sometimes I use uh, pork jowl. Most time I use both of them, but right now I'm gonna build my broth. The secret to good collard greens is your broth has to taste good. Remember that when you taste in your broth, it has to taste almost like some good soup and then you know your greens is gonna be good. If you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So remember, cause you know you done ate some bland ass collard greens, okay? You ain't gonna show up at church naked, so don't make your collard greens naked. Build it up, suit them up. So I'm about to suit my collard greens so they'll be perfect for Sunday morning church. So I like to throw a banana pepper in there. Sometimes I cut it, sometimes I don't, sometimes I use more. But like I said, I am building my broth. Remember, it has to taste like soup. So now you can cut these if you want. I'll put them in whole because they cook, they actually cook down. And then if you get a big bite of it, so what? And once again, I go to my chicken base. Gotta have chicken base. This is not gonna cook with your greens, okay? This is some good, ham hocks have the best meat in the world. If you never ate a ham hock, you are cheating yourself. This fatty, ain't nothing healthy about nothing I'm cooking today. So let's get that understood. So don't be looking at, if you a vegan or whatever, go get you to, go get a lawnmower and eat the shit after the lawnmower. Ain't nothing healthy about this dish, but it's good, you know? This has to cook, to get everything down, this has to open up and the flavor from the fat and the meat has to cook down in this broth. And sometimes it takes about an hour and a half to two hours, so remember that. Put this on and let it go. So I'm gonna let that go. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna clean some greens for y'all. Cut some greens, these already been cleaned. I hate when I go somewhere and you didn't take time to do the sides. I try to put love in everything. I mean, it's like a, I always say it's like a concert, you know? The meat, if you had a barbecue restaurant, the meat is, is the prime act. This is Stevie Wonder. My mashed potatoes is Anita Baker. And my, uh, my smothered chicken and gravy is Prince. You know, so that's a bomb ass concert right there. Yeah, we got these all ready to go. But like I said, I'ma uh, get this set up again. I didn't make that much of a mess this time. So now I got my water. Now you see this boil? Now do you understand what I was talking about, about that ham hock? Look at that. I can't even pick it up. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted that to break down into this. So now this seems like for that little bit of water, it seems like that's a lot of uh, collars. I guarantee that they're gonna, these collars are gonna eat up mostly all that water by the time it's time to serve this. So I like to add crushed red peppers, just a tiny bit more seasoning salt. And I like to add a little vegetable oil. And all that does is just mix with my broth Mix with my green and just ensure the flavor is going to be there. Like I said, collard greens are a staple. So this has to cook for about another, bring it to boil. Uh, once it comes to boil, turn it down just a little bit and let it simmer. Go back, get in your recliner, and let these cook. Let these simmer for about 45 minutes and they'll be ready. We flip the coin, either rice or mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes one, okay? Peel a couple of potatoes and probably peel a little bit of skin off my finger, but it matches that right there. I'm gonna let these boil for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. All right, so my potatoes are pretty much done. I'm about to pull them out, and we're about to mash some potatoes. You see that? That's the consistency I want. Perfect to be mashed. So I like to mash mine while they're hot. It is hard to season potatoes or mashed potatoes when they cool off, so. All right, so now I'm gonna season. Some seasoning salt. Some black pepper. Now you see how you can see that seasoning in there? You see that? You want no pale ass potatoes. You want them seasoned, but not over seasoned. Now another secret. Everybody love garlic mashed potatoes and all that. I'm gonna give you a quick sheet on these. Get you some powdered ranch dressing. Throw that in there, right at this stage too. Right now, we can go sit down right now, if you wanted to, but now we finna shine them up. 
we put the suit on them, now we gotta put some shoes and socks on them. And I like a lot of butter in mine. So now I'm gonna add my milk. I'm about to go set up the dinner table because we're about to eat. It's, it's dinner time. Call everybody, ring your damn bell, whatever you gotta do, it's time to eat. Let's eat. Smells so good. This is the best time right now. It's dinner time. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. Look at this. Mm, mm, mm. You gonna eat good today. I'm gonna eat this for you. Mm. That's good. Get this for the recipes. For this exact recipe, click the link below. And I got so much love for munchies and I'm coming back again and I'm bringing them to LA and Texas real soon. Love y'all.